Yellowstone supervolcano warning over hydrothermal explosions after surprise underwater discovery. Violent hydrothermal explosions will continue to occur in Yellowstone National Park. Geologists warned following a study of their history over the last 14,000 years. While the geology of Yellowstone National Park is most notorious for its potential to produce large super eruptions, far more common are smaller violent hydrothermal explosions caused when uh, near boiling water suddenly flashed into steam. These events release large amounts of energy. They fracture the rock downwards and often forming craters. The same hydrothermal systems cause these explosions uh, they're responsible for producing Yellowstone's iconic fumaroles, hot springs, and geysers, like Old Faithful. Unlike these features, though, hydrothermal explosion craters have been far less studied, despite the Yellowstone Lake area hosting at least eight large craters, including three of the largest of their type known on Earth. Now, we know Yellowstone is one of the 21-some-odd supervolcanoes of the Earth, it last had super eruptions 2001, uh, 2.1 uh, 2 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, 640,000 years ago, and uh, it had uh, a lot of explosions 70,000 years ago and another 80 eruptions since then. It houses over 60% of the world's geysers and over 10,000 hydrothermal areas. Now, the new investigation was undertaken by geologist Dr. Lisa Morgan of the U.S. Geological Survey and her colleagues. Dr. Morgan said, the hydrothermal system in Yellowstone is the largest in the world. Over 10,000 hydrothermal features are here. Yellowstone's hydrothermal system is driven, she said, by high heat flow over a large area, by high precipitation rates, and by active seismicity and deformation. And she says, for this study, we wanted to know more about the recent geologic history of Yellowstone Lake and what role hydrothermal activity has had in the lake, especially the role of hydrothermal explosions and their triggering mechanisms. And we know that the, the uh, Yellowstone Lake sits about uh, on the northeast side of the caldera, and it covers about, what, a quarter of the caldera surface. It sits on top of the magma chamber surface. Now, in their study, the team collected a new sediment core from across the uh, various cores from the northern portion of Yellowstone Lake and studied these alongside cores previously taken in the area. The researchers correlated the deposits across the various cores and analyzed their chemical and physical attributes, identifying those formed by hydrothermal explosions. Dr. Morgan said hydrothermal explosion sediments deposited underwater have never been described in published literature. In analyzing the cores, we made a lot of discoveries and had several surprises. Number one was how different the explosion deposits found in the cores looked from explosions deposited on land. And she said this was to be expected since one was deposited through a water column and one was deposited on land. In total, the researchers found evidence within the cores for at least 16 deposits formed as a result of hydrothermal explosions. 14 of these were small-scale, localized events, but the remainder were associated with two of Yellowstone's largest hydrothermal explosions craters, that of the Mary Bay and Elliott's craters. The Mary Bay hydrothermal explosion happened 13,000 years ago. Isn't that something? That's about the time of the Clovis Comet impact the younger Dryas age. So that Mary Bay hydrothermal explosion about 13,000 years ago, and it resulted in a crater some one and a half miles wide, part of which is submerged under Yellowstone Lake. Land-based deposits from Mary Bay explosion have been studied previously, the team explained, but the freshly analyzed sediment cores from the lake show both that the extent of the explosion deposits are larger than previously thought, and that the lake level must have been lower at the time of this explosion. Based on their analysis, the researchers have concluded that the Mary Bay explosion was triggered by a sudden 46 feet drop in the lake level caused by an earthquake, a seismic event. 
This tremor, they said, also caused a tsunami that eroded Yellowstone Lake's outlet waterway. The explosion that formed Elliot's crater, the team said, occurred some 8,000 years ago and left a 2,300-foot-wide hole in the ground. Unlike that of Mary Bay, Elliot's crater is fully submerged by the lake, although the team concluded that its deposits are also widespread than was uh, previously thought. The researchers believe that Elliot's crater formed when a seismic event fractured a sediment dome cap in the hydrothermal system, releasing the pockets of gas or gas-charged fluids trapped underneath, triggering a hydrothermal explosion. The majority of the smaller deposits, the team said, were formed by previously unknown and more recent hydrothermal explosions. And consistent with the findings of previous studies, the team found no relationship between them and volcanic activity at Yellowstone. Dr. Morgan concludes, given what we see from Yellowstone Lake and elsewhere in Yellowstone, hydrothermal explosions of various scales will continue to occur. The findings were published in the journal GSA Bulletin, and this is by Ian Randall on Express UK. Now we know that, uh, as we said, there are over 10,000 hydrothermal areas in Yellowstone, over 60% of the world's geysers. And you'll see that here we have, we have these beautiful aerial images of Yellowstone everywhere. This is the uh, prismatic lake. And you'll see that the mineral deposits have different, very, various different colors all around the lake. And uh, it's from the water uh, gushing out at various points as it sprays along the ground. And from one of the past uh, Yellowstone uh, uh, articles, they explained to us that uh, this is what causes opals to be created thousands of years in the future. So you can imagine how many uh, deposits of opal, opaline, uh, I, I love opal. I mean, I, I can't get it in Greece, but you have a lot of opal in uh, Australia and a lot of opal rings. I used to <laughs> wear opal rings when I lived in New York. Okay, I love my opal ring. I don't know where I put it. But um, these beautiful colors, uh, thousands of years in the future, will turn into opal. Okay, it's not a very uh, hard uh, rock. It's very soft, but still they're beautiful. So I'll leave links below for you for this. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.